So, welcome back students. So, in the previous lecture, we are continuing with the same module that is the module on using transition metal catalysis. We have seen the production of methanol and formaldehyde and we have also seen the several configuration for the production of methanol, the slurry based reactor, then the continuous reactor all this. Now, we have uh, some sort we have coming to the conclusion of this module and uh, we right now we will move to the last part of this module which is what we will discuss the fischer tropsch synthesis. So, the fischer tropsch synthesis it is a new concept that is uh, what we are doing is we are converting uh, you know, the syngas. So, one of the fuel is as I have told you it is coal, another is oil. Now, this is a new fuel that is called syngas. So, syngas is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, we will see how we can convert this syngas to some valuable fuel products. So, that is what fischer tropsch is all about. So, what we will see? So, uh, just now I have discussed the syngas scenario. We will see the syngas and its different forms from where they are derived. So, they may be derived from the biomass, they may be derived from the oil, I am sorry not oil, the coal, then finally natural gas. Okay. So, these three are the sources for the synthetic fuel, biomass, coal, natural gas. Then output is your syngas, your syngas is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, then how to convert this particular mixture, a synthetic gas into valuable products that is all about fischer tropsch process. And for this process, obviously this process will not go on uh, along immediately or it is not uh, feasible, it needs catalyst because it has to be selective also. You may get range of products starting from alcohols, alkanes. So, it should be selective that you should not produce oxygenated compounds. So, for that we will see specific catalysts which are able to do this conversion in the fischer tropsch and then the reactors that is an integral part. Both catalyst and reactors are integral part of this fischer tropsch reaction. So, in this way we will see what are the best uh, configuration available in the industry and which has been followed now. So, syngas from coal or natural gas. So, coal means a natural gas, it means that uh, in this coal means if I write down coal as simply carbon. So, it means the carbon can be converted into syngas which is carbon monoxide and hydrogen. If I react it with let us say a steam, if I go with steam, so it will form CO plus H2 or from natural gas which is CH4. Okay. So, like uh, so whether we have coal or natural gas C it can be either be uh, steam reformed to form CO plus H2 so in gas. So, I am not uh, balancing the this equation or from let us say natural gas if I assume it is methane. So, you can do either a steam reforming to form CO plus H2 or you can also do a partial oxidation. Oh, well, I am not balancing this you get CO plus H2. So, all these processes ultimately what you do you convert whether it is coal, natural gas or biomass it is converted into finally. So, this process you get syngas and this syngas is finally produced to gasoline, diesel or other products or waxes. Waxes is one of the primary products. So, waxes is something like it is a long hydrocarbon chain that is called waxes. So, these are now nowadays it is used for alternative to oil based fuels. Oil you must be familiar oil refineries. So, oil refineries also you have a crude distillation unit. The crude distillation unit you separate the components based on their boiling points. So, you have the lighter component that C2, C3 those coming from the top which are a precursor for petrochemical industries. In the middle you get the light naphtha from there you get petrol, diesel or other alkanes such as kerosene which is a heavier naphtha and as you go down you get higher and higher molecular weight such as waxes, asphalt, alpha asphaltene. So, these are you know already this oil refinery. So, it is something similar to that. So, fischer tropsch means these is a starting product is your starting reactant is your syngas and you convert syngas to these products which are available in oil refinery. Uh, so, these concepts nowadays is coal to liquid CTL and gas to liquid. So, gas to liquid means you convert the gas in gas to liquids or coal to liquids means the coal to liquids means we are having carbon as a coal. So, if you carbon coal to liquids means via the formation of nowadays methanol also is possible because sometimes you do not get CO2H2 you can also convert directly to methanol and from methanol you convert it to 
syngas. So it is via methanol also. But recently, in uh, current scenario, this particular area is gaining attention, the biomass to liquid conversion. So you know, in India, we have a lot of biomass. The biomass, you know, that is the stubble burning effect. Oh, the stubble burning, you burn the whatever the farmers do, they will burn the agricultural residue. So instead of burning it off, can we produce it or convert this at a high temperature and pressure to some liquids? That is what they are doing, many uh, companies are doing into it. Into it. These are giving much more popularity and uh, likewise the methanol to gasoline. So, once you convert the syngas to methanol, can it again if it is converted? Because if you see the thermodynamics, methanol formation is dictated rather than alkane formation. So, the methanol is the probable product from syngas. So, from methanol can we convert to gasoline? So, lot of companies are actually focusing on this methanol to gasoline process. This has been uh, right now it has been deferred by Exxon Mobil now it is earlier it was known as Mobil company now it is called Exxon Mobil. So, they are doing this type of business from methanol to gasoline. So, why this why it is required why was the synthetic fuels came into the picture because it was felt as unless in exceptional circumstances the obvious reason obviously it is not able to compete with oil based fuels. So, the issue is in the World War II, what they did is there were two scientists on which the name was given Fisher and Trops. They what they found as they found a lot of, they could easily convert coal to syngas. So, they had coal in their disposal, they can convert with some catalyst through syngas. So, from the syngas, they can easily convert back to this uh, gasoline products. So, from there, these pioneering people, Fisher and Trops, they were a German during World War time, they then developed this. Fisher Trapps process and in their honor the name is derived. So, why is it came? Because the problem is natural gas is there in methane, but it is not easy to transport in far flung areas. So, what it is you have to transport first this natural gas, then you have to convert into liquid fuels, it is a cumberly process. It is also expensive and it is also logically challenging to deliver the gas to the potential consumer market. So, if you uh, lay down pipelines, if you lay down pipelines, then you have to lay a very extensive network of pipelines or another concept nowadays which is gaining prominence is liquid natural gas, liquefied natural gas. So, instead of gas, can we convert into liquid? Again, it requires an extensive network of pipelines. So, rather than this, can we then convert it directly at their source to fuel? So, that is what it is doing, the possibility of transforming gas into liquids is gaining attention. So, that is why the reason the bulk chemicals like ammonia methanol, transportation of ammonia methanol is easier as compared to LNG or natural gas, because the ammonia NH3, if you want to transport liquid ammonia as a fuel, it is easier, because liquid ammonia you can easily dissociate into nitrogen and hydrogen, so it is a potential fuel. So, at uh, let us say at around uh, 7 atmospheres and 25 degrees Celsius, it is in liquid state. And if you want to uh, transport at 1 atmosphere, then you have to reduce the temperature to minus 7 degrees Celsius. So, these conditions are very favorable to transport it to long distances. So, these conditions are easily available, 7 atmosphere not a big pressure and if you do not want to get into pressure, then you will lower the temperature. So, either way you can transport, same way is for methanol. So, that is why these fuels are gaining ground and you know that we have India, we have declared it to be a hydrogen based economy and uh, you know about the different hydrogen. So, you have uh, read this concept like green hydrogen, blue hydrogen, brown hydrogen. So, these brown hydrogen coming from coal or fossil fuels, okay. then this uh, like blue hydrogen you know it is coming from uh, water splitting. Uh, then green hydrogen is coming what the, this type of compounds like ammonia, methanol. Okay. So, these are the different sources of hydrogen and hydrogen is now used as a fuel, you must be knowing that. So, it is more appealing from an economics of sales perspective due to their much larger market. Okay. So, this is why the synthetic fuels came into prominence. So, this is the overall uh, status, how they do convert. So, if you have the feedstock, it depends upon the feedstocks what you have. It can be either coal, it can be either biomass. So, you gasify these. So, gasify means I have told you it is either steam reforming. So, carbon gets reacted with either water that is steam to give CO plus H2 sorry CO plus H2. Okay. So, this is what is syngas CO plus H2. Likewise, for natural gas also as I just now told methane gets reacted with oxygen to get CO plus H2 or it can also react with steam 
sorry this is ch4 you get so either these is producing syn gas so you do this because this is endothermic reaction the second reaction which i have wrote it is the steam reforming is endothermic while the other one is the exothermic so these are all coming under reforming process steam reforming or with oxygen partial oxidation you get syn gas now the conventional route uh, many industries are taking up is through methanol so this is through methanol you convert syn gas co plus so co plus h2 gets converted to ch3oh so this is the route they are preparing and then methanol to gasoline so these are like mobile has exxon mobile so exxon mobile has uh, pioneered this uh, process and you get liquid fuels and the other part is we the where we are now discussing in this lecture is the fischer tropsch synthesis so fischer tropsch synthesis what we will do is we will directly convert syn gas to a range of products to a range of hydrocarbons ranging from c2 to let's say c19 so you have this range of products and this range of products will depend upon the type of feedstock you use catalyst temperature then what is the concentration of co and h2 this is a critical factor so it will all depend upon these factors the ratio of carbon monoxide to hydrogen then the catalyst use the temperature and also the feedstock all this will depend upon what sort of product you get so in short what i have written here is it will have a product ranging from c2 to c19 so that's why you need a refining process here refining means you cut this or separate this based on their boiling points or whatever process you want to use then you are ready for liquid fuels so this is the way where the primary routes we have outlined the coal biomass and natural gas is converted to liquid fuels via syn gas so these are the major reactions which are occurring in fischer tropsch so these are the main reactions the main reaction you should know because the conversion of this syn gas to alkanes and to olefins these are the main reactions both are important alkenes are important in olefins is very very important because you know you have c2 c3 c4 these alkenes they are very useful they are the precursor for petrochemicals so you need to make several polymers these are the monomers of those so these are very useful so that is what these are the main reaction side reaction can also happen now the issue is this side reaction this water gas shift reaction is very important because what it happens is if you have a feed stock which has feed stock i mean to say that you have this syn gas if you have more amount of carbon monoxide less of hydrogen and you want the catalyst to operate into a hydrogen rich environment then this reaction will be helpful will be helpful because it will reduce the concentration of carbon monoxide so it will reduce it from co to co2 so you are producing h2 so it will make this co to h2 ratio since co is decreasing hydrogen is increasing means this ratio is decreasing so ratio decreasing means you will can use certain catalyst which are not good for higher concentration of carbon monoxide which can only use for example you have a source of natural gas so natural gas is primarily hydrogen so in those cases you used to have a have a different catalyst as compared to high ratio of co2 h2 so we'll talk about the catalyst later or you may also have this reaction let's say co plus h2 you can form the alcohols so you can form this alcohol so this is uh, yeah well this would be an uh, ch3oh it will be so these are i mean these are this should be corrected it should be around some alcohols such as methanol this is an example then if you have a very high temperature this bordeauxards reaction may occur what is this bordeauxards reaction this carbon monoxide may form coke which we don't want and it is a irreversible reaction so it means that if it forms coke then it will plug the reactor if it is plug the reactor you have to shut down so it means you should take care the temperature that is a very important aspect so you should not reach a very high temperature such that the carbon monoxide itself is getting converted to coke which is of no use so these are the side reactions uh, this side reaction is water gas shift reaction is essential sometime it is useful while other side reactions are not that useful the bordeauxards reaction we should absolutely avoid so the fischer tropsch process overall it implies that we are creating one mole of ch2 so the creation of one mole of ch2 results in a heat release of 145 kJ so it's a exothermic reaction this is an order of magnitude larger than that of ordinary catalytic reactions 
in oil refining and hence characteristic of Fischer Tropsch reaction. So, what is the difference between other refining reactions? This is an order of magnitude larger. So, amount of heat released per mole of formation of CH2 that is a methylene group is one order more. So, hydrogens here actually they keep on getting attached from a chain expanding mechanism. It is some sort of let us say you have a polymeric system. So, you have a propagation rate and you have a termination rate. So, they will interplay within each other though propagation rate and termination rate you have to decide based on the catalyst condition and the other conditions. So, unfortunately we still do not produce non-methane hydrocarbons selectively. So, because the issue is thermodynamics now you can do many things from reactions, but thermodynamics if it is not possible there is no point in going ahead. So, instead we get a blend of hydrocarbons with different chain lengths and molecular weights. Okay. So, I will show you the conversion through thermodynamics which are the probable products. So, this formation of hydrocarbons with varied chain length is given by this Anderson Flory Schultz distribution. But first, let us see the thermodynamics of these processes. So, if CO and H2 gets reacted, so if CO, CO plus H2 getting reacted, what will we be forming? So, from this plot, if you see on the y axis, I have given it as free energy change. So, what is the energy change? So, higher the energy change, more is the probable reaction. So, if you see in uh, with temperature rise, uh, all these are possible. So, the methanol is, see methanol is, it is highly probable as compared to, because the free energy change in less, it is more probable as compared to alkanes. So, it means conversion of syngas to methanol or ethanol as dictated by thermodynamics, it is easier as compared to alkanes. So, it means the catalyst development is a very significant step due to the importance of selectivity in addition to activity. So, we can get methanol alcohol very easily, but we do not want that. We want these products in the methane, ethane. Okay. So, from this ethane and higher molecular chain, the free energy is more. So, if the free energy is more, they are more difficult to be formed. So, it means that you need a specific catalysis. Okay. So, thermodynamics inhibits the formation of alkanes. It allows the formation of alcohols. It is more preferable towards alcohol. So, it means the catalyst plays a major role. So, before we see the catalyst, let us see how these products the different chain of hydrocarbons are distributed. So, the hydrocarbon chain grows by adding a single carbon segment formed from carbon monoxide to the end of already existing chain. The relative probabilities of chain growth and chain termination alpha and 1 minus alpha. So, if I want to put some uh, nomenclature, so chain growth means alpha and chain termination is 1 minus alpha. Obviously, it is the converse of each other. They are independent of chain length, then you should do keep this in mind, they are independent of chain length and therefore constant. They are only dependent on the catalyst type. So, it will depend on the catalyst employed which permits simple adjustment of the process to achieve the required product yield. So, what are the tunable or manipulated variable? You can tune this H2 to CO ratio or temperature to adjust the selectivity. With increasing temperature, it is seen that alpha decreases in value. So, if you see if your starting product is syngas, okay, starting product is sorry the reactant not product, starting component is syngas. Now, what you do? What is the product which is possible? Now, you have alpha that is a chain propagation. So, what happens? C on top of C, you get attached hydrogen. So, it is CHT is formation. Now, if you want to terminate this, the termination rate is 1 minus alpha. So, you get methane as a desirable product. So, what is the probability of the formation of methane is 1 minus alpha. Now, let us move forward. Let us uh, suppose this is not terminated, it is propagated. Then it is propagated means another alpha factor will come here. So, it form a ethyl group and this ethyl if it now terminates, it will be with a frequency 1 minus alpha. So, it forms ethane. 
So, you have to multiply the factor of probabilities that is alpha into 1 minus alpha. The probability of formation of ethane is directly proportional to the product of the probabilities of propagation and termination. Now, you keep on going like this and you keep on multiplying these probabilities. You will reach somewhere here which is again finally, it is propagation and uh, let us say you are finally here instead of propagation, you are termination. So, you have 1 minus alpha here, you are terminating. So, you are terminating this compound. So, it means the overall probability will be the product of alpha times n minus 1 into 1 minus alpha. So, this is the way this Anderson Flory method or the distribution has been given. So, so as I told you, the products needs to be highly selective. So, if it is should be highly selective, the reaction should occur in the presence of metallic catalyst. So, it means that it should polymerize the syn gas into hydrocarbon chains. So, what are these metallic catalysts? These metallic catalysts are usually the transition metal elements belonging to iron, cobalt, thenium. Okay. So, despite its high activity, the nickel is the most highly, I have not discussed here nickel here, but nickel is highly active. Even though it is highly active, but it is only able to form methane. This is not our objective. We do not want to produce methane. We want to produce gasoline. Gasoline means you go to higher hydrocarbon chain. So, it means there is no use using nickel. That is what the nickel has been obsolete or it is not useful. The remaining group 8 metals, what are these group 8 metals like iron, then, uh, then cobalt, other two elements are also there. So, these are also have lower activity and less control for selecting long root chain hydrocarbons. So, overall this transition metals all of them are ferromagnetic because of their d orbital electron shells which are partly filled. Because of this partly filled d orbitals they will split and they will draw this you know there is the homo and lumo gap and because of this they make the reaction happen. The issues are other issues that have disadvantages are with this catalyst is carbon deposition. So, if suppose there is a, a carbon deposition during the conversion of syn gas or sulfur which are already there in syn gas, if these two happens, they will damage the catalyst. So, for example, if this catalyst is exposed to carbon, iron is more vulnerable or if the syn gas consists sulfur, cobalt is more vulnerable. Okay both you should keep in mind the catalyst should be free from either the carbon formation in the reaction or sulfur being present in the initial feedstock that is syn gas. So, let us see one by one what are these different catalysts. So, in the range of this temperature with hydrogen to carbon monoxide ratio as 1.7 iron catalysts are active. Compared to cobalt iron catalysts perform the water gas shift process making it the superior choice for CO rich syn gas. So, what is the water gas shift reaction? So, water gas shift reaction means CO reacting with H2O to form CO2 plus H2. Okay. So, this is the water gas shift reaction. So, this water gas shift what it will do? It will reduce the content of CO. So, it is a CO rich syn gas. So, if your feed has a CO rich syn gas, so it means it will reduce this CO2, CO2 and H2 such as uh, you will have a choice for those feed which has high amount of carbon monoxide. But on the other hand, it is a poor choice for hydrogen rich syn gas. So, if you have already a high amount of hydrogen in place of carbon monoxide, this iron based catalyst is not useful. For example, the source from natural gas which is methane which has a very high content of hydrogen that is not at all useful for iron catalyst. High Fischer-Tropsch activity is also seen in other ferromagnetic iron phases such as iron nitride, iron carbide and iron carbonitride. Okay. When iron nitride oxidizes more slowly than other materials, so this is an advantage the iron nitride oxidizes more slowly, so their catalyst is usable. The molecules and chain that results, but the only issue is the molecules which are results are oxygenated and they are much shorter. So, that is why these different iron phases are not much useful because they produce instead of linear hydrocarbon chain they will produce oxygenated compounds such as alcohols. 
But with the help of alkali promoters such as K2O, the probability of chain growth can be improved by promoting CO dissociation. Okay. So, if you add these promoters such as K2O, you can enhance the CO dissociation and you produce more of the linear chain compounds. Cobalt catalyst, now we will discuss the iron catalyst. Now, the cobalt catalyst require a lower H2 to CO ratio and temperatures between 200 and 240 degrees Celsius to form. So, it means cobalt can be useful for higher CO conversion. So, higher CO and lower H2. Okay. So, H2 is in this case you have higher H2 concentration. I have written here earlier CO to H2, now it is written H2 to CO. So, it means it is preferable for those feet which are having higher amount of hydrogen. Why? Because the syngas, this particular cobalt catalyst is not able to perform the water gas shift reaction. So, that is why you always use a feed which has a higher amount of hydrogen. So, temperature is 200 to 240. So, cobalt is, but the only issue is cobalt is 1000 times expensive than iron. So, it is essential to increase the catalyst surface area as much as possible to keep the cost down. Specifically, 10 to 30 percent cobalt is dispersed into aluminum oxide, silicon oxide or titanium oxide. So, what they do? They will disperse this cobalt as a catalyst medium on top of the different substrate like aluminum oxide, then silicon oxide or titanium oxide. The so, small amounts of ruthenium, small amounts of ruthenium, rhenium and platinum has also been demonstrated to improve the activity. To get the paraffin wax out of the natural gas, so it means if you want to use, where do you want to use this? So, as I told you, this cobalt catalyst can only be used in cases which has high hydrogen content. So, if it has high hydrogen content, which is uh, useful for natural gas as a feed. So, this natural gas as a feed, we can use, but the only issue is, it will provide a long chain, the chains will be large. So, if the chains are large, the product wax formation is highly probable. So, problem is this wax promotion and the diesel output use of this cobalt catalyst is the desired product. So, it is the diesel output is then raised if the diesel is formed, it is raised to over 73 percent by a process called hydro cracking which involves heating the wax to a high temperature. So, if the wax is formed as the primary product, you can carry a hydro cracking and what you do in the hydro cracking, these particular products of wax is broken into small fragments or small hydro elements. So, you saturate it with hydrogen and break the large hydrocarbon into short chains. Okay. So, there are two things to keep in mind, one for a higher H2 to CO ratio and a larger for H2 to CO ratio. When there is a larger H2 to CO ratio, you use cobalt catalyst. When there is a lower H2 to CO ratio, you use iron catalyst. Catalyst application with ruthenium is also possible, but the as a, it is actually the problem is it is 50,000 times more expensive. Ruthenium's ability to produce the highest molecular weight hydrocarbons without the use of promoters. Now, in the case of this, the catalyst preparation cost is less because you do not need to add some promoter. So, and also it is able to operate at lower temperature, but on the downside it requires a higher pressure. The fact that ruthenium is a pure metal and can serve as a catalyst makes it particularly well suited for research into Fischer-Tropsch synthesis mechanism. So, the in many of these institutes, research institutes, much of the work is going on ruthenium because the ruthenium can be used as simply as a pure metal. It needs not to be, uh, you know, coated on top of from support. So it can be used as a pure metal. So, what are the summary for the different catalysts in the Fischer-Tropsch process? The Fischer-Tropsch synthesis catalysts which are now used are either cobalt or iron based. So, whatever plants we have right now are either based on cobalt or iron. Cobalt catalysts have higher activity and higher chain growth probability. So, cobalt catalyst as I told you, it will have a higher chain growth. So, the probability of formation of waxes is higher okay, because it has higher activity. So, it means after the waxes are formed, you need to do a hydro cracking, break them into small molecules. So, it is obviously, it works better in the manufacture of fuel and waxes like I have written here. Okay. Use of iron catalyst at high temperature is optimal for the synthesis of acetylene and linear alkenes. 
So, it means where do we use iron catalyst? We use iron catalyst where hydrogen is less, carbon monoxide is more, so that we can produce linear hydrocarbons and linear olefins. Additionally, low H2 to CO ratio. So, when you have a low H2 to CO ratio means higher amount of CO, which is the primary syngas product from coal derived. So, from the coal you get H2 to CO from coal you get a lower H2 to CO ratio okay, syngas. So, this is particularly suitable for coal as a feedstock. So, the iron catalyst is the choice. The ratio of H2 to CO in the reactor is large because iron, but the ratio of H2 to CO in the, in the large why it is because the CO gets converted by the water gas shift reaction, CO gets converted to CO2. So, your CO concentration goes down. So, it means the hydrogen is more. So, that is why we have written the ratio of H2 to CO in the reactor is larger because iron encourages the water gas shift process. So, cobalt catalysts are more suited for producing syngas from natural gas because they have a higher amount of hydrogen and they are less active. So, there is no water gas shift reaction which can convert CO2 to CO2. It is no water gas shift reaction. So, that is why it is suitable for those type of processes. So, now what are the range of products you get from? So, you see these are classical, I have given a plot between the product in wet percent versus x axis which is the chain growth probability. So, what is the chain growth means? How long the chain is? It means how heavier the product is. So, if you see I have uh, different zones I have made. This is the wax, this is the highest hydrocarbon chain length, diesel, this is intermediate, gasoline, well in the other countries called gasoline, we call it petrol in India, then LPG, then fuel gas. So, you see that uh, the formation of the products which are lower or a smaller chain length is more probable when the alpha chain growth is around I can say okay, around 0.8 or suppose something like that, this region the fuel gas and LPG is highly probable. Okay. But as you go increase the chain growth, your hydrocarbon becomes elongated and elongated. So, intermediate you form the gasoline or diesel and as you go to this direction the likely product the likely product is waxes. The waxes are paraffin waxes, so you need to do a hydro cracking. So, this is how the product, but now what happens is this classical catalyst work in this region, novel catalyst can go up to more than 0.95. So, you may have if you get a 0.95 percent, so it means that uh, you may get uh, based on the catalyst both fuel gas and wax, waxes for cobalt and fuel gas or LPG for iron based catalyst. Okay. So, it depends on what the industry wants to do and what is the market economics. So, the next part which we are uh, now will covering are the different reactors for the Fischer Trapps process. So, the first reactor which we will consider is the multi tubular reactor. So, what is the multi tubular reactor? The, this is the multi tubular reactor. The heat of reaction here is dissipated in the multi tubular fixed bed reactor by the use of a circulating boiler feed water bath that surround tubes of small diameter housing the catalyst. So, you have the heat of reaction that is the methylene group is getting added. So, you have the heat of reaction coming out. So, this needs to be dispersed because it is an exothermic reaction you need to get it dispersed. So, what they do is this is the boiler feed water is entering here. So, it is present in the annular part okay, outside. So, this will all go up this manner and in between these tubes you have the catalyst. So, in this catalyst what you do you send the syngas from the top, the syngas enters into this tubular tubes axially. So, a high linear gas velocity is given and the unconverted syngas is again reused. So, whatever gases products suppose this is there syngas is again sent back, okay. unconverted syngas is again sent back. What happens? This boiler feed water takes up the heat of reaction which is happening inside the tubes and steam is generated and you have the wax coming out. So, this is you can say it is a cobalt based catalyst. So, it is possible to run the multi tubular fixed bed at a low temperature, this is the temperature. 
carbon deposition becomes excessive above the upper because it is resulting in the reactor obstruction. So, carbon uh, deposition means the carbon uh, gets uh, you know CO gets combust combusted to carbon because of the high temperature coke formation can take place. The coke formation will take place inside the inside this catalyst medium or inside this tube it can block the pores of the catalyst the reaction may not happen. So, much of the products as I have noted here is this C 19. So, these are waxes where the hydrocarbon chain length is more than 19. So, these are uh, can be liquids. So, overall this particular reactor can also be termed as a trickling flow reactor. Okay. This is a trickling flow reactor. This is the earliest reactor which was made. Then came an improvement of slurry reactor. What is a slurry reactor? You have a slurry bed. So, it means it is a liquid is there. It is similar in operation to the fixed bed reactor. It uses a finely divided catalyst floating in a liquid medium often the FT. So, whatever the product it is getting from the Fischer Tropp's wax product is present as a liquid form. So, what you do is here you do it in the downward direction you introduce in gas. So, the reaction takes place in the slurry bed because it is a slurry so it can dissipate the heat. So, how do it dissipate the heat both ways in the liquid as well as you send the boiler fluid water in the form of the coils and in this coil you get generated as steam. So, entire contents are agitated. So, the syn gas actually enters here it gets bubbles, bubbles are formed here okay, and you get the product here. So, these gaseous products are linear not waxes, but some compounds which are less than wax. So, these are so issue is this FT reaction the what happens is because the heat of reaction is dissipated the waxes which are may be forming in this slurry is again getting converted to the smaller compounds. So, it serves two purpose slurry dissipate the heat as well as reduce it to smaller compounds. So, this is the way these slurry reactors takes place. So, there is the issue is what are the advantages of this one is the, the limitation on mass diffusion and heat transport are lessened by the small size of the catalyst particles. Okay. Heat, so, whatever the heat is dissipated within the slurry that is been taken care with this liquid and it is also been taken care due to the steam which is generated. Okay. The cooling coils in the inside of the reactor removes the reaction waste heat just now I discussed. So, you have the cooling coils here which is boiling fluid water is flowing within this. Okay. Heat transmission efficiency of the catalyst particles is considerably enhanced by the liquid media. So, you have the catalyst particle dispersed here inside. So, that this catalyst particle because it is placed inside a slurry the it remains well and the heat transfer transmission is efficiently taken care of. But the problem is the temperature is too low then wax will form the liquid wax may be then be viscous while too high would cause hydrocracking reaction. So, you need the temperature to in between the hydrocracking reaction and the wax formation. So, that is why the temperature should be fixed in such a manner. So, even if the wax is formed you should not have hydrocracking reaction do not allow the wax to form neither you allow the hydrocarbon or the hydrocracking reaction to occur. But all this has some problems because when you have this formation of this wax it is very difficult to separate from the suspended catalyst. Since the end result the product is heavy traditional processing methods like distillation and flashing are infeasible. You cannot flash a heavy product you should have a liquid product. So, it is not possible an important stage in the evolution of this that is why some re more uh, research was carried out from the slurry based reactor we have successfully created the creation of the reliable and low cost liquid solid separation step. So, some sort of let us say you can separate out this process let us say by crystallization you can separate out the different products, but it is not useful. So, that is why the fluidized bed reactor came. So, the contents of the fluidized bed reactor importance is there is the absence of liquid phase. So, that is the origin of the fluidized bed reactor. So, it is important to avoid producing wax since this would condense on the catalyst particles leading to agglomeration and loss of fluidity. So, if this wax actually forms on the catalyst particles. So, the active surface area will be decreased and if it decreases it will never form the catalytic activity. Okay. So, therefore, temperatures greater than 570 Kelvin are ideal for operation in such reactors, but if you take a higher temperature 
and only fluidized bed can obtain that because it is always in the fluidized state, the gaseous state. But the problem with fluidized bed, carbon formation can occur. So, what we do is that the, we do not increase the temperature to a very high limit. So, you keep within that limit, okay. this is called the fluidized zone. So, that you should use the catalytic active surface area as well as produce non wax product. So, this is a circulating fluid bed, the Kellogg company, the Kellogg's company here they have developed this circulating fluidized bed. Here the syngas and powdered catalyst are constantly recirculated in the Kellogg designed circulating fluidized bed reactor or in short form it is CFB. Okay. Another design uses cooling coils to remove most of the reaction heat with the remaining fraction being carried off by the recycling and product gases. This is then separated from the catalyst using cyclones. The main problem with this kind of reactor is the flow of solid catalyst particles which can erode the reactor walls. Now, let us look at the working of this particular reactor. So, you have syngas coming in, it is entering, there is some adjustable valve. If it enters here, it is entering through the catalyst bed, bubbling through it. There may be some catalyst again settling down it is coming here. So, this is the point this slide actually controls how much to be sent up, how much of the catalyst is to be re removed. If it removes then what you do is combine the syngas and catalyst, I mean do not keep the temperature too high otherwise the reaction will form within these pipes only. So, what you do you send it to this particular reactor where you actually since is the presence of catalyst you need to cool this. So, you have this coolant in and you have two separate coils with the coolant out it, it cools it. Then again you send it back the syngas back to the syngas and the catalyst back to the main reactor. So, in the main reactor because of this fluidized nature, so you have this fluidized means you have a fluidized bed all the catalyst bed is in this form fine particle form. So, you have the cyclone kept here what it will do it will entrap the catalyst particle and allow the products primarily these will be the gasoline products in the case of fluidized bed reactor the gasoline products to pass through. So, only problem here is this kind of reactor the flow of solid catalyst particles can erode the reactor walls. So, the solid catalyst particle this is the react. So, it can erode these walls so, that you have to take, take care of using a very good or resistant corrosion resistant material. Okay, this is the process. Then there is an improvement this is the fixed fluidized bed that came about state of the art fluidized bed then you do not have the coolant system separately. It has lower cost, reduce the complexity and increase the efficiency. So, what you here you have is a boiler fluid water. So, this is the fluidized bed. So, you have the catalyst here in the form. So, syngas enters here, it is distributed in different directions and what you do the heat of reaction is captured by the steam. So, this is also connected to the technology and challenges which were present in 1940. So, the what happens is the earlier reactor which we have studied there were some issues regarding the defluidity of the mixture. So, because of that that technology was not developed this technology came much later. So, that is what this now is currently used and the products which are formed again it works in a similar manner. So, whatever catalyst particle you have you actually entrap them in the cyclone and allow the products. Primarily this product will be petrol, I am writing petrol in place of gasoline because this word is uh, synonymously used by all of us. So, you get the petrol type products, petrol, gasoline, diesel all those products. Okay. So, if I want to compare all the reactors, the selectivity of fixed bed and slurry based reactors towards heavy products is high because of their low operating temperature the initial two reactors. The primary byproduct of the high temperature high pressure fluidized bed is gasoline. So, if you use the fluidized bed you will get gasoline, if you use the slurry of the fixed bed reactor you will get wax. The more lighter products are also formed from the fluidized bed such as methane and lower alkenes it can also be formed they have to be separated, but the primary product is gasoline, minor product is methane and lower alkenes. Now, let us see these profiles for these reactors. So, if I want to typical dimension of this Fischer Tropsch reactor using the iron catalyst, see the other reactor heights, reactor diameter, tube diameter, number of tubes, catalyst size, reactor capacity, and potential reactor capacity. The capacity, if you see height wise, uh, the circulating fluidized bed is the highest as compared to slurry and multitubular fixed bed reactor. Diameter, it is the lowest. So, it works well 
if you want to see the comparison between different reactors, diameter is the lowest in the circulating bed, highest in the fixed fluidized bed. The tube diameter is 0 0.05 in the case of multiple tube fixed bed reactor, you do not have a tube here in slurry, circulating or fixed, that is just nil. Tubes, you do not have any tubes in these except for the multiple iter tubes are more than 2000. Catalyst size, well, now the issue is with the catalyst size, here, see here you can use a catalyst size much larger 1 to 3 mm, but here you use micrometer 10 to 150, 40, 150, 5 to 100. So, it means the preparation of the catalyst will take some additional step to reduce them into finer particles. The capacity, yes, it is higher for the fluidized bed when compared to remaining 3 reactors. But the potential reactor capacity is very high, right now it is hardly 10 percent or 20 percent is achieved, 20,000 uh, this capacity, it is only 11,000. So, they are the current reactors are running at 50 percent, okay. So, these are the different reactor dimensions. Now, let us see the operating conditions. The inlet temperature is the lowest in the multipolar reactor, it is highest in the circulating fluidized bed and the fluidized, fixed fluidized bed. Outlet is also highest in these. Pressure required is uh, intermediate in the case of slurry based reactor as compared to circulating and fixed bed. Now, the type of feed they can take up, this multitubular fixed bed have higher amount of hydrogen, it can take up the feed with higher amount of hydrogen, but it will only take a lower amount of hydrogen, while this can take again a higher amount of hydrogen and higher amount of hydrogen. So, it means these, these particular reactors can take syn gas which has higher amount of hydrogen, that is the fluidized bed as can take up higher amount of hydrogen. So, the water gas shift reaction works well, higher amount of hydrogen here in this case, while this is the lower. So, water gas shift reaction will not occur. So, these are about this. Now, let us see where are the plants for different plants where it is set up. So, these are the different plants now operating. So, these are the company Sasol, Sasol Sin Fuels, Petro SA, Shell, Sasol Chevron, Shell, Qatar Petroleum, Sasol, Sasol Chevron. So, the location you can see it is all worldwide. Some of them are present in South Africa, some in Malaysia, in Qatar, in Nigeria. So, the feedstocks are also different for different companies. See in the initial Sasol, it is primarily coal, while the later on all this Petro Shell Sasol, which is set up in South Africa, Malaysia, Qatar, they uses the natural gas, primarily methane. Now, water, so in, so feedstock with coal, you can say only these two, Sasol is only happening or taking up the feedstock which has coal or other supplement. Reactor, they can use all types of reactor, this Sasol company, they are using fixed bed, CFB, slurry and they are using iron based catalyst. Well, in the case of natural gas, all various variant are used, the circular filters bed, fixed bed, the slurry, the fixed bed and the slurry, all these are used, but they use cobalt based because it has higher hydrogen. So, it means you have this cobalt catalyst to be useful because the water gas shift reaction does not happen here. So, operation see many are present till now from 1955, 80, 2000, these are present till now 1995, these are based synthetic fuels and uh, all are available, these three all are available, Petro SA, Shell, Sasol, all Chevron. So, the output, current liquid output is around 5000 barrels per day, then this is 6, 1 lakh 6000 barrels per day, 30,000 barrels per day. These are all, uh, when I am talking about this liquid, it means I am talking about primarily gasoline. So, that is what I have written a key word here, the Fisher Trops produces Fisher Trops diesel. So, these are all producing the fisher trops diesel, which has a high C10 number and a negligible sulphur content. As I told you, sulphur content should not be more in such, because if it is a higher, then it will decompose the catalyst, okay. So, this actually concludes this our, uh, this we will see some plant in details, the Sasol plant we will see in detail and also we will see the shell mill distillate column in detail in the next lecture. So, this particular textbook you should follow, which has this syn gas production as well as the conversion in fisher trops synthesis process and you should also visit this uh, website where a detailed process is given with respect to fisher trops synthesis, the catalyst and the reaction mechanism. Thank you.